Welcome to the Virtual College Fair for All Virginia Students, sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com slash Virginia. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from the University of Alabama. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you all for putting up with my scary fingers. Dell put the camera at the bottom of the screen on my computer, which is quite unfortunate. Um, my name is Elizabeth Dugas, and I am the University of Alabama's regional recruiter for Virginia. And um, I am going to give you kind of a quick overview of our campus and end with our admissions and scholarships process, which actually just changed today, as a matter of fact. Um, so we are located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Um, it is a medium-sized college town. It has a sizable downtown that's about a mile away from our campus um, with several hotels, restaurants, shops. Um, and then right around our campus, we also have an area called The Strip, which is really popular with students and has a Publix grocery store as well. Um, you can get to Tuscaloosa either by driving, because all of our students are permitted to have cars on campus, even freshmen, or taking the train, which is around Tuscaloosa, or you can um, take, the, take a flight from just about any airport in Virginia into Birmingham, and um, those flights are about an hour away from our campus. Um, as far as what we offer, we have majors in most everything because we are a large university. We have about 32,000 undergraduates. So we offer all types of majors. They are all strong and they all have undergraduate research opportunities because we are an R1 research university. Um, we also are one of the top schools in the country for internship placement. We are currently ranked number two for that. So you have lots of opportunities for hands-on experience by the time that you graduate. Um, we also have very strong student support services and career services. So we have over 90% positive career outcomes for students to be employed in their field at graduation or to be enrolled in graduate school. We do get admitted into graduate and professional schools at higher than the average national rates. Um, as far as student life on campus, it's very vibrant. Um, as I mentioned, because we are a large school, we have all types of organizations and activities um, to offer you. So, there are six to 700 different clubs and organizations on campus, um, all types. We also have the largest Greek system in the entire country. So if you're interested in sorority or fraternity life, we certainly offer that. But it's merely one more way to get involved. If that's not your cup of tea, it's only about a third of our students. So you can definitely be a student leader and have a social life without choosing to get involved. Um, we also offer Division I athletics. Most people know that, but occasionally I do get asked if we have a football team or I get asked if we're that Alabama. And yes, we do have a football team and we are that Alabama. Um, we resumed our football schedule last Saturday. Um, we are ranked number two in the country currently, and we're having our home opener this Saturday against Texas A&M. Um, in a normal year, our stadium seats over 100,000 students. There's going to be reduced capacity this year, or, or sorry, 100,000 fans. Um, there's going to be reduced capacity this year, but students are still able to attend the games. Um, they're just not able to get a full season ticket package like they would in a normal year. They're getting half season ticket packages instead, um, but they're still able to cheer on our Crimson Tide. Um, and we also have 21 total Division I sports, so football is merely one of them. And for all of the other 20 Division I sports, you don't have to have a ticket to be admitted to those. So you just show your student ID or scan your phone and you can get admitted to any of our other athletic events, ticket free. Um, as for our admissions process, um, we are actually test optional this year. Um, and that is a very hot off the presses announcement because we literally just made it like three hours ago. Um, so that is happy news for me. I've been hoping for that for quite a while. It takes, it took a while to get that accomplished. 
Um, and I actually was one of the people that was, that was kind of behind that, so I'm pretty proud of that right now. Um, but our averages are a 3.8, 3.83 officially GPA, and a 12.80 SAT or a 28 ACT. But like I said, we're test optional, so you don't have to provide those. We are able to award scholarships um, this year without test scores. That's the first time that that has, has ever been a possibility on our campus. So um, with, for students who have at least a 3.0, they are eligible for scholarships. And the higher the GPA and test score, then the higher scholarship you could get on our non-test optional scholarship chart, which we call our merit scholarship chart. But we also now have the test optional chart, which was released about a week ago. And that's for students um, who complete the scholarship application after they're admitted and students with the most complete applications. So the highest level of student involvement, the highest level of passion, of, of things that they have overcome, of commitment, of um, student activities, of, of community service, of leadership. Um, the, the students with the most of the, you know, the most superior skills in those areas as demonstrated on their scholarship applications, they will be eligible for scholarships as well without any regard to test scores. So that's really exciting for us this year. And I'm very happy to announce that. Um, as for our admission process, it's rolling admission. So if you're a senior, we're admitting students now. If you are a junior or below, it typically opens up in July each year. We accept our own app only this year. Starting next year, we'll also accept the common app. The earlier you apply, the earlier that you can be admitted, but you always have until May 1st to decide. There's no early decision or anything. We don't look at essays or letters of recommendation or even at your extracurricular activities for admission purposes. Again, those go into the scholarship application. So we're just really going to look at your academics, um, particularly your high school transcript is where we, we make most of our admissions decisions at this time. Um, and like, like I said, you always have till May 1st to decide, but students who deposit with us earlier are able to pick their housing sooner. But we guarantee housing for all freshmen and we have some of the nicest housing you'll find on any college campus. Thank you all for listening and have a good evening and roll tide. Thank you. Just a reminder to send in those Q&A questions at any point. Uh, next, we'll be hearing from Hollins University. Hi, everyone. My name is Maggie Flynn. I am a senior admission counselor here at Holly Hollins. My colleague, Kaylin Asif, the director of admission, is also here with us and will be keeping an eye on the Q&A to answer any questions you have as we go. So I hope this presentation will be able to give you an idea of how you might be able to start your Hollins journey. Hollins is located in the heart of the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. The city of Roanoke is a small but really vibrant community with a thriving downtown and countless outdoor recreation opportunities. Campus is a convenient about 15 minute drive from things like shops, museums, restaurants, and the airport. Founded in 1842, Hollins is the oldest women's college in Virginia, and we're home to about 800 total students. Hollins students are encouraged to explore their own unique interests through the liberal arts and have 29 different majors to choose from. With an average class size of 11, students are really supported through close relationships with professors and advisors. In addition to academics, our thriving Division III athletics programs compete in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. If you're an athlete, feel free to check out hollinsports.com to learn more about some of our teams and the recruiting process and opportunities for you there. Despite our small size, we really value being a diverse community where all identities and perspectives are welcomed and really celebrated. You'll find about a third of our students identify as students of color and or Hispanic or Latinx. Our community embraces students for who they are, and really strives to make Collins feel like home for everyone. In addition to the in-classroom and academic support, Collins encourages students to take their learning beyond the classroom. So our Rutherford Center for Experiential Learning ensures that students have access to hands-on learning through things like study abroad, individual research, internships, leadership, and uh, community engagement. And actually 91% of Holland students will take advantage of these opportunities. And access to these programs is guaranteed for every single student that's interested. So at Holland's, we're really committed to career preparedness and that uh, commitment runs deep. Most Holland students will take advantage of internship opportunities before they graduate, which is something that just really makes resumes stand out amongst um, the other pool of applicants. 
Some of our recent internship placements have included the Library of Congress, MSNBC, Estee Lauder Global Communications, the Virginia House of Delegates, uh, the Lawyers Committee for, for Civil Rights, and the National Down Syndrome Society. Our expansion learning opportunities really contribute to why our students are so successful and have such great outcomes. And you'll find that 95% of graduates are either enrolled in a grad school program or employed within one year of graduation, which is much higher than the national average. Here are just a few of the ways Holland stands out among other colleges and universities nationwide. While it's hard to define a typical Holland student, I think their passion for the community and ways of getting involved in it is something that really binds us together and always we stand out. So if this sounds like it could be a good fit for you, I want to talk a little bit about the application process. It's free to apply either through our website or through the Common app. In addition to the application itself, we require a high school transcript and either a secondary school report or letter of recommendation. Test scores are optional for this year's applicants and we truly mean test optional. Students will be considered both for admission and for scholarships, whether or not they choose to submit test scores. To give you an idea of kind of where our admitted students fall, the average GPA and SAT of this past year's admitted students was about a 3.7 and 1190. So keep in mind that with that, it is really just an average. Our view approach is very holistic. So we take into consideration and really love seeing things like your essay, your extracurriculars, your letters of recommendation, and even demonstrated interest. Through uh, this holistic, really, um, review process, we really strive to get to know students personally. On this slide, you'll see our three different application types and deadlines. Be sure to note that our November 1st early decision deadline is a binding application, which requires your commitment to Hollins. If you're still exploring college options, which is totally fine, I recommend either our early action or regular decision non-binding options. We are typically able to provide an admission decision within two weeks of receiving a completed application file, so that gives you plenty of time to feel really confident in making your college decision and in finding that best fit for you. So Hollins is really committed to making our high quality liberal arts education affordable and accessible. This commitment includes a scholarship guarantee of at least $24,000 per year in grants and scholarships for every single admitted student. You'll also see that our average aid award of gift, gift aid was falls just under $37,000. So we know that college is a big investment and we wanna make sure that you're investing in a quality ed education and being able to help you in making that investment. Uh, Hollins is ranked regionally and nationally as one of the best colleges for the money by College Factual. Um, we are always happy to chat with students one-on-one, -on -one, but I think that scholarship goes a long way. Long way. Uh, you'll see some of our virtual visit programs. Feel free to um, check out things like our student panels, workshops, uh, information sessions, and overviews. We'd love to see you at any of those. I hope you found some of this information helpful in learning a little more about Holland. We would love to welcome you to campus for a private visit as well, which we are now open for. Check out the website listed on screen to sign up for a visit, which would make you eligible for our visit grant, up to $1,000 added into your financial aid award. Uh, please feel free to reach out to, to us any of the ways listed on screen. Uh, and thank you all for coming here today. Thank you so much. Next, we'll be hearing from Eastern Mennonite University. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening. My name is Hannah Cash, and I am a senior admissions counselor at Eastern Mennonite University. I graduated from EMU in 2018 with a major in psychology and a minor in art, and I look forward to hopefully staying in contact with you throughout the admissions process. Harrisonburg is a vibrant college town located in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley. We are conveniently only about two hours away from major cities like DC and Richmond. And because we're in the Shenandoah Valley, this provides the opportunity for our endless adventures and outdoor beauty that our students love exploring on the weekends. EMU has a student body of approximately 1,000 undergraduate students. You can see our averages in the upper left-hand corner. And again, it's important to note as of this year, we are officially test optional. Pictured here are our brand new science center facilities, including anatomy and physiology labs that hold our cadavers, chemistry labs, engineering labs, and a large classroom used for expert lectures. 
One of the most important reasons to attend college is, of course, to develop skills that will prepare you for a rewarding career. Let's talk about academics at EMU. We truly believe that together we can accomplish great things. Here you'll see a comprehensive list of our major offerings along with career concentrations and graduate programs as well. Keep in mind that some careers do require a graduate degree that EMU may prepare you for even if you don't see that specific major listed. We're excited to share that 98% of our job seeking graduates are employed within one year of graduation and the numbers speak for themselves. Our graduates are accepted in the medical school, pass the CPA, and are hired by schools and hospitals at rates well above national averages. The main reason for our success is because of our small intentional class sizes that allow professors to provide close mentorship to students. Another reason for our alumni success is our intentional experiences outside of the classroom. Many of our students learn through various internship opportunities. For example, our education majors begin their classroom experience within their first five weeks as a first year on campus. And our nursing students complete hands-on clinical experience in a wide variety of healthcare settings. Another internship opportunity we love to highlight is our Washington Community Scholar Center, where students have the opportunity to complete a full-time internship for up to a semester in DC. An internship at the Washington Community Scholar Center also fulfills EMU's cross-cultural requirement. EMU's cross-cultural program is a major component of the core curriculum that provides students with the opportunity to gain experience through travel and internships. And if you are interested in traveling abroad, you're guaranteed a trip, and EMU students can choose from a wide range of locations all over the world. Another reason to attend EMU is to build relationships and create memories that will last a lifetime. Students enjoy regular weekly and annual events on campus like the Royals Ball every winter and Tuesday Travia every week where our students earn cash prizes. There are a wide variety of ways to stay active and participate in recreational activities through intramural sports, the climbing wall, and the free fitness center. Clubs and organizations are also a very important life part of life on campus. There are 30 or so on the list, but if you're interested in something you don't see, there is a streamlined process for any student interested in starting a new club. We also offer a number of student services, and one that I really like to highlight is our Academic Success Center that offers free peer tutoring and paper editing to all EMU students. At EMU, we believe the world needs more people who know how to work together well, and we're the perfect place for students to become unifying leaders. EMU is a Christian university affiliated with the Mennonite Church USA, whose values lie in Christian discipleship, community, service, and peace. One example of these values is Nobel Peace Prize winning alumnus, Lima Bowie. While of course not all of our students will go on to win the Nobel Peace Prize, all EMU students do learn to lead together on our diverse campus. Now as the saying goes, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. As you can see, we have a number of men and women's sports teams. EMU is a part of the NCAA Division III ODAC Athletic Conference. If you are an athlete that would like to begin the recruiting process, please fill out a recruiting form at emuroyals.com recruits that you'll see on the bottom of this page. Even if you aren't an athlete, the fan experience is just as great. EMU students get into every game for free and you might even get a free t-shirt during Rowdy Royals events. At EMU, we are committed to making the school an affordable option for you and your family. 99% of our students receive financial aid. This past year, our average assistance package was over $37,000 and we awarded more than $17 million in financial aid. So hopefully you're wondering what your next steps are. We very much encourage you to schedule a time to visit online or in person this semester. In addition, once you've completed EMU's free application, either through the Common App or the EMU website, all we need is a high school transcript and any other items you choose to submit to review your application for admission to EMU. You can also begin to submit your FAFSA as of today. After that, you'll be able to review your financial aid notification with your admissions counselor and hopefully become a Royal. Here we have some contact information for myself and my colleague, Ben Duran, who is also on this call and um, checking out the chat. So please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Shepherd University.
Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for being here for this session today. My name is Lacey, and I'm an admissions counselor at Shepherd University. Now, if you're not familiar with us, I'm going to talk a little bit about today about the, the Shepherd community, campus, academics, and just where you might find yourself fitting in on, at Shepherd. So to get us started, if you're not quite familiar with us, we are just about 90 minutes out from DC. If you look at our campus, we are actually on the Potomac River. You cross that river and you are in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, right where our campus is. In the heart of history, we are close to sites like Antietam Battlefield, Harpers Ferry National Park. So there's lots to do just in the local area, but we're also really close to DC, just about 90 minutes, Baltimore. A lot of our students end up doing internships, research projects in those areas, and that's where they're usually getting job offers post-grad as well. So I like to call it the best of both worlds. You get the small campus, small classroom sizes, really a private university feel, but we are public, so you get the affordability of being a public school and all the big opportunity that comes with being in that DC metro area. As far as our student population goes, we are under 4,000 students. It's a 60-40 split, female to male, and 60% of those students are coming to us from in-state as West Virginians. The other 40% offer representation from 16 other countries and all 50 states. Academically at Shepherd, we offer 100 plus majors. The average class size is 20 and our student faculty ratio is 13 to one. So I really can't emphasize that those small classroom sizes enough. It's more than just your professor knowing your name. They don't just know your name, they know what you wanna do. They're on the lookout for internship and internships and research opportunities for you. They're the people who are writing your references when you're looking at going into your career field. So making those connections is really vital to your success at Shepherd. We are really into career prep. We are just as invested in the resources that you get inside the classroom as we are outside the classroom. So some of the ways that our students are preparing for their careers now are internship opportunities, clinical rotations for our nursing students, student teaching for education majors, and other field experience and research opportunities. We also have an Office of Career Services that hosts an annual career fair every year. They will work on your resume with you, your cover letter, they'll even do mock interviews. Some other support services that we offer are TRIO, our Shepherd Success Academy, accessibility services for any personal or academic accommodations. Our Advising Assistance Center offers secondary advising. So if you're like me and you're the type of student who wants to walk in with a four-year plan and know everything you're doing, they are there for a walk-in and an appointment and they will make all those, they will answer all your questions and help make those decisions with you. We also offer free tutoring for every subject for all of our students. On campus, we have 90 plus clubs and organizations, campus events and festivals. Shepherdstown itself is a pretty poppin' little town. So if you're ever in town or on campus when there's a football game, definitely get the chance to see community members, students, alumni, everyone come in to be on campus and hang out. And it's a pretty good time. And as far as living on campus goes, we offer three different types of housing, traditional suite and apartment. There are four major dining locations and we offer meal plans for both residential and commuter students. You can also park and have a car on campus as a freshman. Financially, Shepherd students do graduate with less debt than the national average. As an out-of-state student, you're looking at this 28,000 right here, but that's just the sticker price. Usually our students coming in automatically qualify for some scholarships. For example, since you're coming to us from Virginia, you automatically qualify for our Metro scholarship, which is 5,500 a year for all four years, as well as other academic scholarships that are automatic as well. So as long as you're meeting these criteria with GPA and test scores, then you can qualify for those scholarships. Um, I know test scores are kind of an issue this year. If you don't have any SAT your ACT scores under your belt, we have placement tests on campus that you can take. And then for admission, for the 2021 school year, all we require are high school transcripts. We do strongly recommend a personal statement because we love to get a fuller profile of you, not just as a student, but as a person. But again, that's just recommended. SAT and ACT scores are optional, but they're still strongly recommended if you have them. And letters of recommendation help us as well too. 
So some things to keep in mind are that the FAFSA opens up today. So you can get that done for the fall 2021 school year as soon as possible. And that isn't required, but it is required for some of our scholarships. So if you're interested in some scholarships, you wanna get that extra money, definitely keep that in mind and that you wanna have that into us by March 1st. So guys, from here, check out the website, check out our majors, look into the application. If you have any questions for us or our team, we are here to help. So this number right here is our text line. We are on that, all of us admissions counselors during business hours. So if you don't have any questions here today, screenshot that number and get in touch with us and we are happy to answer any questions you may have for us. And that is it for me today. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Serum College. Hi, I'm Tiffany. My colleague Alex and I are so excited for you to be here to join us. We're grateful to have this time to just tell you more about Ferrum and the opportunities that exist here. We are home of the Panthers. Alex and I will give you information and prepare you to begin your journey to Ferrum. At this time, Alex will share with you the format of our presentation. Hi, my name is Alex. A Tiffany is going to tell you what all this beautiful campus has to offer while I answer any questions you have during um, that you put in the chat. She will be providing information about our application process and all the different ways you can be successful in the next chapter of your life. So please drop your questions in the chat. Thank you. I'm stuck. At Ferrum, opportunity exists and success is possible. This is a community where our students push each other to succeed. We have a beautiful campus located in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in Southwest Virginia. We are approximately 30 to 40 minutes south of Roanoke, Virginia, and about an hour and a half north of Greensboro. On our campus of about 1,000 students, students come from 25 states. We boast a student-faculty ratio of 13 to 1. Approximately 90% of our students live on campus. We encourage you to seize your future like a panther with our expert faculty and academic programs that prepare you for today's top careers in graduate schools. In our 70 plus majors and minors, you will benefit from personal academic support and many hands-on learning opportunities, including, but not limited to internships, research and study abroad during E-term, which is also our experiential term. Students who qualify can enhance their education in our Boone Honors Program. 93% of our graduates are employed or enrolled in graduate schools within six months after graduation, after graduating. That's pretty cool. Our students love to support our athletic teams. We have 20 plus men and women's NCAA Division III athletic teams, and we are excited to be a part of the ODAC, which is the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. Our athletic facilities will surpass your expectations. I encourage you to schedule a visit. Come see for yourself. With our more than 60 clubs and organizations, you will always find something to do. I like to say boredom is a choice at Ferrum. Like if you get out, have fun, meet people, you'll always find something to get into. We have everything from intramural clubs to academic and Greek organizations, our Norton Outdoor Adventures Club, and many, many more. All you need to do is get involved. At this time, I would like you to meet one of our very young students, Mia. She will tell you about herself and some of the exciting things she's doing at Ferrum. Hello everyone, my name is Mia Brower. I'm a senior, I'm a social work major and a religion minor. My experience at Ferrum has been nothing short of amazing. I've created many friendships and relationships with professors that have opened many doors for me and allowed me to get involved in many ways I couldn't even imagine. I knew from the first time that I came to campus that this is where I wanted to be and I wanted to spend my four years right here. Ferrum offers so many great things you simply just don't get at other colleges. This experience that you have here is just not, you can't compare it. Being here for four years has allowed me to find myself and taught me how to appreciate the little things. The opportunities that come with being a FAIRM student are endless. I hope that you decide to make FAIRM your home for the next four years. I'll drop my email in the chat. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Sounds like a place you'd want to be. Definitely a place I would want to be. So the next step would be to apply. 
applying to FARM is super, super easy. Um, I encourage you to go online and submit your free application. We're waiving the application fee for all students who do apply on our website, and that would be at admissions.faram.edu. We have already started reviewing applications and accepting students for the spring and fall semester, but you should also send your transcripts to FARM as well. At this point, all students will be reviewed as test optional. If you have SAT or ACT scores though, you should definitely send them. Um, we are a test optional based school anyway, but your scholarship could increase, but it's not required to get a decision from FARM. So this is a cool thing that we're offering. It's the FARM Promise, it's something new. Like maybe you're the student who's set on a four-year school or you're thinking like, I don't know, like maybe I wanna do community college and then transfer. This is something that we're now promoting where if you attend a community college in Virginia, you finish with your associate degree and then you come to FARM. If you don't graduate within two years and it's FARM's fault that you're not finishing in two years, those courses are free. So that's really, really cool that if it's our fault, then we pick up the cost of your extra courses. At FARM, we work hard to make the private education affordable. Over 99% of our students receive financial aid. We award over 22 million in institutional money each year. The average financial aid package is almost 40,000 with an average of only seven to 8,000 out-of-pocket costs for our families. Definitely come for a visit. We have virtual open houses. We have virtual visits. We also have on-campus visits that you can attend. Um, if you want to just take a virtual tour, a one-on-one -on -one tour with the counselor, that's available to you. But we can also like, treat you on campus. Like you can come, we can look at dorms, classrooms, whatever you wanna see, we'll make it happen. And the cool thing is that you get a thousand dollar campus visit grant just for showing up. This visit grant is renewable for every year that you're at FARM. So this is our contact, admissions at farum.edu, and then our website, admissions.farum.edu. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will be hearing from the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Alrighty. Hello, everyone. My name is Tanisha Young, and I am a first year admissions counselor here at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. I'm also a double alum. So I graduated back in 2015 with a communication studies degree with a leadership studies minor and back in 2019 with my master's of education in higher education. So I'm a Seahawk through and through and have a lot of school spirit. So thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about our institution. So to begin about uh, speaking about our institution. I want to talk about our location. If you're unfamiliar, we are located on the southeastern coast of North Carolina in Wilmington, and we are a beautiful beach town community. So we have three beach surrounding areas. So we have Wrightsville Beach, Carolina Beach, and Curry Beach. Wrightsville Beach being the nearest to our campus location, which is just a 15 minute drive. So we have a lot of students who will take up the opportunity to go out to Wrightsville Beach after class if they need a nice study break, um, handling all of our different water activities, such as stand-up paddle boarding, our surf team. So if you really enjoy the beach atmosphere, this is a great pool for you to come to UNCW. Additionally, we have the historic downtown riverfront area that has over hundreds of local restaurants. So if you're a big foodie person, you have some very special southern food available here as well as great seafood. We have great places to um, shop, great nighttime life in both of these locations. So downtown and Wrightsville Beach, our, um, our campus is centrally located from. So again, just a 10 to 15 minute drive to each of those locations. So it's very easy to get around our town. Our town is about 113,000 residents and we are making us the eighth largest city in the state of North Carolina. We are about two hours from Raleigh, North Carolina, our state's capital, and we are about four hours from Richmond, Virginia. We do have an international airport just 10 minutes from our campus. So if you don't wanna do that long drive back to Virginia, we do have an airport for you to utilize. So to begin a little bit about our campus institution size, we are a mid-size, a little over 17,000 total students. A breakdown of that is 14,650 are undergraduates and a little over 3,000 are graduate students. We do offer 56 academic majors for the student to pursue 
the nice thing about UNCW is we are major blind for our admissions purposes. So all of our students don't actually declare their major until they are a sophomore. So your freshman year is really focused on doing our general education curriculum. So helping you focus on some general subject areas that you have already been interested in, but sometimes more importantly, introducing you to new topics that you may have not had the opportunity to explore either in your hometown or at your, or at your high school. If you want to continue your education, we have 36 master degrees and four doctoral degree programs. So to continue on, I'm going to talk a little bit about our student focus here at UNCW. No matter what we're doing, whether it be through teaching, research, and service, it is always starting at the student focus. All of our students who are attending our institution have the opportunity to be engaged in applied learning. That can be research and discovery, study abroad, internships and service learning. That can be very specific to your academic program that you're pursuing or just your general interests. One big thing that we'd like to talk about for research is our Center for Marine Science. We are North Carolina's coastal university, so we offer marine biology all the way up to the PhD level. And then we have a wonderful state-of-the-art Center for Marine Science right on the water coastal inner wave and that's 15 minutes from our campus as well and that's a private research facility that has a selfish hatchery different lab spaces that are available you can go out scuba diving so that's a really hands-on approach and we really do love to take up the opportunity for our coastal area if you want to immerse yourself in a different culture, we have over a thousand programs in over 50 different countries. You could study abroad as little as just one week during a spring break trip or up to two full academic years with our dual degree international program within our Cameron School of Business. And our Cameron School of Business is ranked in the top 30% of business schools in the nation. And this is a fun dual degree program where you would attend UNCW for two years and then go to a sister school in Europe. So in England, uh, Spain, France, France or Germany and also earn a degree from that institution. A little bit more about our academics, we do require that most students take an internship or practicum with most of our majors. We have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio and a 27 average class size. So even though we're over 17,000 total students, we do have more of a private school feel within the academic classroom. So you really get to engage with your faculty, your professor, as well as your peers to really help with that learning experience. About our campus life here at UNCW, we have over 250 clubs and organizations at our institution, ranging from Greek life to religious affiliated groups, sports clubs, so bringing into our, our, our Student, our student athletic program. We are a division one institution and we have 19 NCAA, NCAA sports teams here at our institution. The one thing that we don't have is a football team. So we'd like to say we've been undefeated since 1947, but we have a lot of great opportunities for you to kind of get engaged with exploration here at UNCW. 75% of our graduates will work full time six months after graduation and then 14 percent will go to a full-time graduate program. And this is just to give you a little glimpse into our institution. So at the top corner is our Center for Marine Science that I mentioned, a couple aerial shots of our campus, um, just to kind of show you what being a Seahawk is here in Wilmington. And then lastly, I just want to quickly go over the admissions criteria. So as everyone else has stated, due to COVID, we, I as well, the UNC system, UNCW, is going test optional. So these are our middle 50 percents for last year, but it's not required for you to submit a test score in order to be reviewed for admission. We have two deadlines, early action, which is due November 1st, and a regular decision deadline that is due February 1st. For admissions criteria, we'll look at your academic profile, so that includes your rigor, your GPA, and class rank, your essay and short answer, extracurricular activities, an optional letter recommendation, and again, those standardized testing that is optional. I want to highlight we do have an open house that is con um, was conducted starting today that will go in through the weekend, so if you want to learn a little bit more about us and uh, attend some of our live webinar sessions, please feel free to go to that website. And then lastly, like I mentioned, my name is Tanisha Young. I am the Mid-Atlantic Counselor for UNCW, so I work directly with our Virginia students. Feel free to follow any of our social media and take a picture and you can email me and hopefully I can share some more information. Again, thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you everyone for presenting. I'd like to invite you all to come back on and answer um, what is one fun tradition that takes place on your campus? Homecoming is an amazing tradition at the University of Alabama. Um, we start the Saturday morning 
with a parade. Um, then we go immediately into a step show um, by our Divine Nine, then into a dance competition with all of the sorority pledge classes. Um, then the elephant stomp is led by our mascot, who is Big Al, who is an elephant. Um, and he's the only shaped mascot who's ever won the mascot national championship. He and the cheerleaders and the band lead the entire football team and then followed by all the fans into the stadiums. So it's, it's, it's really exciting. <laughs> That's great. Um, next, so, Hollins University. Yes, at Hollins we have a ton of wonderful traditions. Um, women's colleges in general are pretty robust in their traditions. My favorite tradition is Tinker Day. So Tinker Day is a randomly assigned day in October, typically after the first frost. Um, the president keeps it a secret, so nobody knows on campus what day it is. Um, and the president decides to cancel classes all day. Students convene on our front quad um, where they are in crazy costumes. Um, we sing um, songs, class songs, and then we have Krispy Kreme donuts for breakfast and then hike Tinker Mountain, which is right next to our campus. Once we get to the top, we resume with some class skits. We have um, Tinker cake and fried chicken and macaroni and cheese, and then hike back down the mountain. So it's a really big community um, oriented day where we can celebrate our community members um, in a shared space and have a nice lighthearted day in the middle of the fall semester. Awesome. Uh, student favorite tradition at Eastern Mennonite is definitely our International Food Festival. Um, every fall students from any and every background will get together and cook their favorite dishes and, and we have a great afternoon and evening um, out on the quad and you get a bunch of free food and in college I'll tell you free food is very important and amazing. Um, so everybody loves it and you take a vote on who's the winner and the winners get like cash prizes and Amazon gift cards so it's a win all around and again delicious food. Sounds great. At Shepherd, we have, for every president that we have, they select a new ram to be our mascot. If you look at my photo, I made my little profile picture, a picture with me and JC. He's named after our president, Mary JC Hendricks. He's at every football game and we have a birthday party for him every year. But I think the best part about it is that he lives on a farm locally and they say at the farm, you usually have to leave him alone because he's a ram, you know? But when he comes to football games, he is ready for the camera. He he knows where it's at, so photogenic. Um, so yeah, that's ours. That's awesome. Um, for fair, um, we have a lot of cool things, but I think one that stands out for freshmen that they start is when they first come in after move-in time, they have what we call walking under the teacher's bridge, which is where all of the faculty are lined up and they walk under them. It's like a welcome into fair and welcome into college. Um, we have the bell ringing, so that's pretty cool. I guess it's more ceremonial than anything, but it's just like, wow, like I'm here, I'm in college, this is real. Now I can kick off the next four years or two with a success, so that's something cool that we do. That's great. Here at UNCW, we uh, always have a welcome week at the beginning of the semester, and we have like three big standing um, traditions within that week. The first one is Beach Blast. As you know, we are a beach community, so again, we like to utilize that as much as possible. So the school will rent out three-fourths of a mile of Wrightsville Beach, and we'll get different vendors out there, so you get a lot of swag, free food, and just hang out with your friends and interact with all the new students that came for move-in. And then additionally, we do a hypnotist as well, so that's also really funny to see all of our students get up in the stage in our Trask Coliseum and get hypnotized. And then lastly, we always do fireworks and a concert on the commons a great opportunity for us to support local bands and they'll come out and you could see a fireworks show afterwards that's awesome thank you all for joining us thank you all for sharing those fun facts too when you close this window there will be a link to a very quick four question survey we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide also this was just one of many sessions being holded or being hosted excuse me so be sure to check out the sign up for additional sessions at strivescan.com slash Virginia. In about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at that same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. Thank you all.
Bye now.